For today's grim adventure, we're visiting the filming locations to the movie Kingpin, which was filmed here in the Pittsburgh area. One of my all-time favorite comedies starring Woody Harrelson, uh, Bill Murray, Lynn Shea is in it. It's an amazing movie, kind of twisted, but it was filmed all right here in Pittsburgh. I've always wanted to visit the filming locations to this. Sadly, before I moved, didn't get to do it. But today, while we're in town for a week, this is going to be an adventure. I wish we had a bowling ball. The start of our video is taking place right here in Trafford, which is a little bit in the movie. Now this bridge is called the Trafford Veterans Memorial Bridge. We're gonna talk about it in just a moment. But if we turn the camera over this way, towards the end of the bridge, you're gonna see this building, that brick building right there. That was Roy Munson's apartment. Oh, it gets a little weird. Now, this is a busy road. It's not really an intersection, but the turn, it can be kind of dangerous if you're not paying attention and just deciding to walk across the street. Now, in order to get a really good shot of the front of the building, we have to do it from across the street. And what's neat is all these little houses, it's like what? One, two, three, four different apartments, or not really a duplex, because duplex is two. What do you call this? It's like a little, What's that? Split level. Split, not, not really split level, but this right here. This was Roy's apartment building. This is where it all took place. Now his was on the far left hand side, that white door, address 533. And as we get closer, you're going to see that the, the, the address sign is identical. It's still the same. Seeing how busy this road is today, I'm guessing that back when they filmed Kingpin, they had to shut it down. Now, after Roy Munson loses his hand in the ball return in the bowling alley because, you know, he's being kind of shysty, it cuts to a wood chipper. And right now we're standing right about where that wood chipper would have been. And the camera pans over to that building right there. And it has a title card. It says Scranton, Pennsylvania, 17 years later. Roy wakes up with the sound of his alarm clock and he destroys it with his hooked hand because remember, he loses his hand and he walks right out that door, the white door. You see the 533 label? It's still there, the same exact spot, the same exact everything. That was his apartment. Right next to it, that window, there are the two guys sitting right there. And if you remember correctly, he asks Roy Monson, hey, is it safe to drink your own piss? Even if it is your own. Can you get sick drinking piss? I think you can. Even if it's your own? And then Lynn Shea's character, she's a creepy one. She comes right out of there and she always wants her rent. She does whatever she can to get her rent from Roy. Hey, Captain Hook! I want that rent for the bar! You are out of here! I remember whenever I was living here in Pittsburgh, you know, growing up, when this movie came out and it came time for me to start looking for my own apartment, this is the apartment that I wanted to live in. It's pretty far outside of Pittsburgh, but it was because of this movie. <sighs> 533, this is it, Roy's apartment. There's just something otherworldly about the neighborhoods here in Pennsylvania. The way the buildings are set up, I mean, every part of the country, they have different ways of doing things, different influences and in architecture. But this is cool. I like this little, little stretch of neighborhood. Right next to Roy Munson's house, the Trafford Veterans Memorial Bridge, this is where Roy encounters the woman crossing the street with the baby. And 
he kind of scares the kid with his hand and he ends up stealing the milk. It all happened right here. In fact, you can see that apartment building in the shot as well. Let me help you here. Yes. Come on up. Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> That'll come out. <laughs> Treasure these special times. And as Roy turns and walks up the street, he sees somebody trying to rob his landlady. Well, it turns out, I'm sorry, spoiler alert if you haven't seen the movie, he actually stages it as a way of trying to get out of paying his rent. And he goes up to the guy with the knife and he says, what are you, a sissy trying to steal a purse? And he throws his coffee at him. Give it back, what are you, sissy, you need a purse? I'll slice your throat! <laughs> As Roy gives her back the purse and makes sure she's okay, you can see his door in that 533, his address, and that window behind them both. And it's such a good movie. It's so much fun. You'll never look at her the same way after seeing her part in this movie. Oh man, Kingpin. Here you go. You okay? I'm fine. That was a very brave thing that you did, Munson. You are a hero. A genuine hero. Now Roy's attempt at buying him some time to pay his rent works and he goes inside there and it turns out that it was his best friend that he paid to stage the robbery. And they're inside the kitchen, they're talking, doing all that stuff and Lynn Shea, the landlady, she comes in and she freaks out because oh my god, she realizes that she was swindled. <laughs> and then Roy Munson throws another I think it's coffee in his face and he tells him to get out and he climbs right out that window right there. Now what's really neat about this, if you look in the background, you can see the brick wall from the other building just outside the window. You crazy bastard, what, how the hell did you get out? Now get out! That'll be a hundred now, you prick! And don't come back! The next stop on our Kingpin filming locations video brings us to Mars, Pennsylvania about 45 minutes north of Pittsburgh itself. What you're looking at right now is the Mars Lanes where in the movie Kingpin, this was the Lancaster Bowl where Roy first meets Ishmael. He hears him bowling. You call this a bowling alley? Roy would have drove his car right up this driveway and parked over here near that guardrail on the left-hand side. Now what's really comical about him and his hook hand, every time he touches something with it, he pretty much rips it off. Like the rear view mirror, and when he gets out of the car, the door handle, but he would have parked right here. And you see the, the red lettering where it says bull? On top of that, in the movie, it said Lancaster bull. Looks like the bowling lane is currently closed, which is too bad because I really would have liked to have gotten inside to see what it looks like now compared to when it did when they filmed Kingpin. Back then, it looked like the walls were pink on the inside. In this scene, Roy Munson would have gone inside trying to sell different novelty items for basically the men's restroom, and they weren't having it. And while he's in there talking to the owner or the manager of the bowling lane, he hears somebody bowling. He hear, it turns out to be Ishmael. And he hears it, and it's a darn near perfect bowler. Strikes almost every time, but Roy gives him some words of not encouragement, but just gives him a few different tips. And Ishmael says, you, you got all that by watching me bull one time. And he said, no, I heard it. You could tell all that from just seeing me throw one strike? I didn't see it, I heard it. We're gonna try to get this before it starts raining. Just behind Jessica across the street, you can see the giant letters that say bull. That was Lancaster Bull filming they always try to keep everything really close to each other. Now, Roy Munson's house, his apartment, was on the complete other side of Pittsburgh, but the place where he grew up, where his father taught him how to bull, is right across the street from the bowling lanes. Now it's a garage, and we're gonna line up some shots. Things have changed, siding has been added, but this is it. This was Munson Gas Station. Well. Let me correct myself. I said Munson Gas Station when in fact it was actually called Munson Service Center, which basically is the same thing. You're introduced to this at the very beginning of the movie. Roy's father is filling up a car 
which would have been right in front of where that car is. There was a gas station. And then Roy comes into the picture, a very young Roy. Over this way, he comes trying to jump over a white fence and ends up tripping. I guess technically, you find out later on, he munsoned that jump. A lot has definitely changed over the years, but right here, pretty much right where these school buses are parked, right in the middle of them, this is where Roy's dad was teaching him how to bowl. This is where they had that makeshift bowling lane. Obviously right now it's a parking lot, the building has changed a little bit, but there are a few different things that you can line up. Now if we look way over here in the distance, you can see a blue building. That blue building can be seen, depth of field, the cameras that they use, it's a little bit different. But you can see the, that blue building over there with the bays. But even more importantly, behind the young Roy as he's bowling, you can see this building, which is across the street. Other than that, there's really not much you can line up. Things have changed so much. But it's neat that it's still here. All kinds of movies were filmed here in the Evan City Mars area. Night of the Living Dead, The Crazies, there's another scene that was filmed here in this stretch of road. It was a very quick scene, but it's where Roy discovers that somebody put sugar in his gas tank and it was going to cost him about $2,000 to fix. It all happened right here in front of these garage doors of this building. Now we know this, and aside from production notes and everything, but if we continue looking down the street, let's walk over here and look over the trash can. You see, that red house right over there with the garage, how it sticks out to the street. You can see that in the background, as well as this building. Now, obviously it has grown, it's been repainted, but this is it. No problem, my friend. Engine blown. Engine blown? Someone put sugar in your tank. How much is it gonna cost to fix? $2,000. $2,000, that's gonna wipe me out. I can honestly say I've never had the pleasure of having somebody put sugar in my gas tank. Heard that it sucks. Don't ever want it to happen to me. But this is it. The last bit of it, well, it's still standing. From what I hear, the Dairy Queen's been torn, uh, torn down. A lot of it was filmed in Reno. And the farm where Ishmael, his family's at, where Roy goes and pretends to be Amish. Don't know where that's at. I've been looking. Private property, so it's really hard to find. But these, these are easily accessible. They're in public place. All right, the last spot that we're gonna go visit is where Roy Munson loses his hand at the beginning of the movie. That ultimately, that's how he has the hook and he kind of has to give up bowling. And you know what? Since we're in Mars, we have to stop off at the UFO spaceship. Yeah, you heard that right. Town called Mars and they absolutely love that they're called Mars, that even here, in the town square, they have a UFO. Look how massive that thing is. Wait a second. Jessica, what are you doing? I'm trying to see if they're sympathetic to my vibrations. <laughs> all right. Or is it my synthetic vibration? All hell. Oh, now you're getting all tongue-tied. In a way, I kind of feel like you and I are like Mulder and Scully of the X-Files with all of our travels. We have- I'm Mulder, you're Scully. I'm Scully? Yeah. Why am I Scully? Because we can't both be Mulder. So you want to be Mulder? You want to be Fox Mulder? Spooky Mulder? But he's got the cool name, Spooky Mulder. Yeah, and you're tall like him. Yeah, I'm Spooky Mulder. You look like him. I'm you're fine. Scully. I'm Scully. I'm sorry. No, no I'm... she's hot. It's... I love her. <laughs> Before we leave, we're going to go ahead and do a complete walk around this UFO, so you can see how magnificent it is. Now, we could probably come here and do a video only on Mars because the bank is named Mars, the library is Mars, they got aliens all over the place. Just look at this. Yeah, this is really cool. But if you're gonna hang out with aliens, don't forget to clean your hands. Right? Yeah. Cleanliness is next to extraterrestrialness. Probably, I would think so. Also right next to the UFO is a, is a pillar, a wooden sign, if you will, that says, may peace prevail on earth. 
And if we walk around it, there's three other sides where it's in different languages. I'm not even going to pretend. I'm not even going to pretend to speak it or to say it. I think this is Spanish, Russian, and well, I'm not sure about that one. Pretty wild, right? All right, we have one more location for Kingpin. Ooh. We gotta go now before the rain um. washes us away, like a spider. Our final spot on our Kingpin filming location brings us to Rochester, Pennsylvania, with the Beaver Valley Bowl. Now, towards the beginning of the movie, Woody Harrelson and Bill Murray decide to go and swindle some bowlers. This is the bowling alley on the second floor, and this is ultimately Oh, where Woody Harrelson loses his hand. Just like Jessica just did. Crazy, right? And this is ultimately where, you know, he, has, he ends up giving up bowling. Now, it's a massive building, that's for sure. I can't tell you how many times I drove by this on the highway and had no idea what it was. Now, in this scene, they pull up and they park right about there where the sidewalk ends. And then they walk right in through that white part of the building underneath where it says Beaver Valley Bowl up to the second floor. And back there where you see water, you can see some river boats going. Today, it looks abandoned. We're not gonna climb up and go inside there or anything like that. Although it would be really cool want to see the bowling lanes, if there is any bowling lanes. But we're going to walk around and see if we can see anything through the windows. Yeah, look at that. Let me turn the camera. That's the building. That right there would have been the front entrance. It says no trespassing. Second floor is where the bowling alley is. So let's go ahead and walk over here. They would have walked right in through this door. Take a look. Let's get up close on the glass. Oh, wow. God, do people actually bowl here? They live here, they die here. They get their mail here. Uh, I don't know about this, Mr. McCracken. Something doesn't seem right. Pretty freaking wild, right? Just walking around the building and looking in the windows, it does look like somebody tried to renovate this building at one point. Now you can tell that this is a wooden door. Well, it's a wooden piece of like plywood on it. Um, but at one point it was glass. And we know that because of all the broken glass that's on the ground here. Jessica, please be careful with your flip flops. I'm careful. But it's kind of pretty though, right? Broken glass, it kind of looks like ice crystals. Walking this way around the building. Looks like there still is a sign right there. But this place has been left to rot for the most part. I love the look and feel of a decayed building. I love the old Right? The brick walkway here. Look at this. This is cool. Very, very cool. It wouldn't surprise me if they used this building or this property for other things. It is pretty off the beaten path, like the highways over there as well as Rochester, the town of Rochester. What's it say? Office and laboratory? What on earth? So they made soaps here. They used to make soaps here. Over this end, you see the, the, the spider webs? Now we're not going to go in the building, but it looks like somebody has crawled inside there at one point. But let's get up here. Because... Yeah, that's where the light There's some chalk spider webs here. Alright, I'm not going to go in, but I'm going to put the camera in there. Let's go. Look at that! Looking at the building from this angle, look at that giant bowling sign up there. Let's go bowling, Beaver Valley Bowl. Man, that is cool. 
I don't know, let's walk around. Okay. Right now we're gonna walk around toward the back of the building, see if we can see anything. I'd love to go in, but honestly, I don't know, Rochester has always been a pretty bad area and I kind of don't want to go inside and possibly have something happen. Who knows? Yeah, new windows right there. Also, massive signs that say no trespassing. So we try to keep everything as legit and legal as possible on our channel. Somebody's here. Oh wow, okay, yeah, there's a lot of stuff open over here. We can probably walk up and put the camera inside the windows. So this is still the first floor. Okay. It's all still the first floor. The bowling alley was on the second floor, that's why there's that kind of... Yeah. Glass. Oh, I want to get up to the second floor so bad though. Right. It's probably not the safest or smartest decision, but I'm going to go ahead and walk up these steps and peek through the front door here. The trick is when you're walking to just kind of walk on the support beams. All right. Just giving you guys a heads up. There's a little area over here that we can walk through and show. And sadly, there's a whole bunch of hate messages written on the walls and we do not want to show any of those. So we already walked through ahead of time, but we do want to show you some of the beauty of what this place looks like. And this corner, for the most part, is pretty clean. I mean, considering, I mean, it's abandoned, it's, it's left to rot, but just look at this. The brickwork, everything. Love to show you some other stuff, but I don't feel comfortable putting that kind of stuff on, on camera, on our channel. What I wouldn't give to go back in time and go up to the second floor and bowl the bowling lanes here, or at least be here whenever they filmed Kingpin. Mm -hmm. Sadly, I'm, well, I'm surprised this building is still standing. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time to the filming locations to the movie Kingpin. And as always, yeah, there's bugs everywhere. So many bugs. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Ooh. Wherever I come, I've had luck Just come my way Wherever I go, hard luck Is that it stay? Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way